in 1 Timothy 2.4 but other words are also used. For example, another word used for doctrine is the faith. Hold on to the faith. That we see that in 1 Timothy 3.9, 2 Timothy, Titus. I have given all those references so that after you go home you might be able to revise the whole thing. One of the expressions that is that are used in the scripture to denote scriptural truth is wholesome words. Wholesome means something that builds, something that that contributes to our spiritual life. Why wholesome words? Because a person who is an expert at using words, he can use words to destroy you. He can use words to discourage you. Let me give you an example. I was brought up outside Kerala. Though I was born as a Malayali, I was brought up outside Kerala. My first language is Hindi, not Malayalam. In 1980, I came and stayed and worked as a missionary among students for three years. I realized that not knowing Malayalam is a great handicap. I had a great desire to learn Malayalam. In 1980, I was uh, at least 30 years younger than what I am today. I could easily have picked up a language. And I had men with me who were willing to teach me Malayalam. I started learning RIEE. I started reading boards on these buses. And then one of the senior brothers asked me, Johnson, what are you doing? I said, Uncle, I am learning Malayalam. I want to learn Malayalam. I want to be fluent in Malayalam. I want to speak Malayalam the way you speak. Oh, he said, my dear young man, why do you waste your time? You focus your attention upon other things. And he was such a nice uncle. I, I accepted his advice. I stopped all, all that learning of Malayalam. And eventually, after three years, I went back to North India, never having to do anything with Malayalam. But then, 15 years after that, I had to migrate back to Kerala. In 15 years, I was at least 20 years older than what it used to be. And I suddenly found myself in the midst of people of Kerala where everyone speaks Malayalam, not Hindi. And I suddenly realized that I am no longer able to speak Malayalam fluently. His advice, did it build me up? No. He gave me wrong advice. Had I tried to pick up Malayalam 15 years before I came to Kerala, I would have been fluent. Just one sentence. And he destroyed the possible benefit that would have come to me. Then at the age of 40, I had to pick up Malayalam, which was no longer easy because you don't, you don't teach new tricks to old horses, do you? Wholesome words means words that build you up. Often a single sentence is sufficient to destroy a person. I come from a line of teaching. I have seen how sometimes teachers carelessly comment or pass comments or remarks about students. Oh, you are not going to become anything. Leads to, sometimes leads to breakdown, mental breakdown. The scripture is the only source of instruction where the words are wholesome. They build you up. That's the reason why we have to give so much importance to Bible doctrine. Would you move with me to point 7 where I have half a dozen verses from the scripture to show you the importance of doctrine. The first one, let's read Isaiah chapter 50, 55 verses 8 and 9. It says, God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. Okay. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Our thoughts are not God's thoughts. And therefore, if a Christian wants to understand God's thoughts, he has to read the scripture. It doesn't come from our mind. It doesn't come from human advice. 
even the best person or the best advisor who gives his own advice he is giving you an advice that might be contrary to the scripture because even the best human thoughts are not divine thoughts they are not god's thoughts we have to be very very clear about about that that's the reason why in psalms 86:11 the psalmist says teach me your way o lord what would be the result i will walk in your truth but then first he has to teach us that's the reason why doctrine is doctrine is so important the number i've given a number of verses you might ask uh, uncle why so many verses we won't be it seems that we won't be able to go through all of them in the classroom yes um this this guide book or this handbook contains much more information than what i can cover in the time that has been allotted to me and we have put all that information into this handbook for on purpose this is not merely for classroom studies rather we produced we printed we bound and we gave a copy to each one of you so that you might take it back you might have that introduction in mind which we gave you here in this class and we want you to go through it once again at least once again probably two or three times because thoroughly furnished unto all good works is a very very essential part of our christian life and we want you to be thoroughly furnished okay why should we be thoroughly furnished we would we would look at that very soon but i can give you a hint you as a christian when you go to your schools and some of you are already um, at the doorstep of colleges or in college your friends ask questions isn't it why are you a christian hey they used to ask me 40 years ago when i was in my school final year they they would ask me uh, i was in my school final year more than four decades ago johnson you are a christian why are you a christian and in 40 years those questions have become much more complex much more sharp and much more aggressive unless you are thoroughly furnished you won't be able to answer those questions you won't be able to face those questions that's the reason why you have to be thoroughly furnished okay there are other reasons john 17:7 17 it's listed there it says sanctify them by your truths your word is truth what is the meaning of sanctification cleanliness what kind of cleanliness spiritual cleanliness i am using very simple words ha huh. now all of you were born and brought up in a generation where children usually don't play in mud have you ever had a desire to go and play in mud just plain sticky mud your parents wouldn't allow you isn't it uh, and because of that you have never faced the kind of uh, disease that we faced in our childhood in our childhood toys were luxury hey forget toys even books were luxury so the best toys that we had and the best best play things that we had was mud clay we used to play in mud and clay and when rain used to come oh wow that was something great how many of you have played in rain hmm good hmm and when it comes to the generation of your children i am sure you wouldn't allow them you would put them in glass cages so that they don't go out and how many of you had the privilege of playing in plain mud clay <laughs> oh and you're alive oh, oh. <laughs> oh you too okay but very few of you your parents kept you away keeping away or keeping a person away spiritually is known as sanctification separation we played in mud and we had a lot of problems i had boils all over both of my legs for many years because all kinds of worms and bacteria they come into your body from mud 
all of you have your roots in kerala kerala had a special problem which children used to have in their childhood today parents have not even seen that even medical doctors have not seen that the problem is known as that disease is known as karappan perhaps some of you malayalis parents you have heard that name but you, you probably have not seen it we no longer allow our children to play in mud that's why our children don't get it it's a kind of skin problem that they separated you so that you may not have this problem whereas i had it i was born here in kerala in this soil we used to play in mud we got it but they separated you don't in the same way the world is full of corruption there are many things in this world that can corrupt you the word of god is the only thing that can separate us that is the reason why lord jesus prayed father sanctify them separate them separate them from those forces those teachings and those influences which can corrupt them separate them sanctify them and your word is truth it is that truth which is going to sanctify us okay the question is if the scripture is so important do everyone in the christian world accept it or do people oppose bible doctrine let me rephrase it do people oppose biblical truths do people oppose scriptural truths they do oh yes just the other day somebody came on facebook and opposed me on my face we were discussing a very important subject now many of you are with me on facebook isn't it if there is anyone who is on facebook and if you are not linked to me please uh, just give me a friend invitation dr johnson c philip is the name if you don't find that there is another profile dr philip johnson i would like to get in touch with you young people we discuss a lot of things there while facebook for most people is a place where they just post this morning i got up this afternoon i am having a headache and this night i am feeling like uh, i am going to sleep no that's not what i i use facebook for every day i post something that is